Hey everybody, welcome back. This is a long, long overdue video. Sorry, I actually just had to cheat and look and make sure that we were recording because I've been having some issues with this iPhone. Um, anyway, this is a really long overdue uh, response or follow-up video to the video I recorded probably three, four years ago. I have to look and I will link it up below. <clears throat> I shot a video when I first was five months in, if I'm correct, to bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment. And since posting that video, um, I have had just, and particularly, it's almost sped up. I'm getting more and more comments on that video and more views, even in the past year. People at, from all over the world actually asking, um, gotta turn this off. Um, asking for direction, asking what I'm doing, asking what I recommend, asking all kinds of questions. Um, and I will do my best to, to, in this video, just bring you up to speed with um, what I've experienced over the past years, what I'm doing now, what I've found works, what is so frustrating, um, what I recommend. And then just know that my plans are with my current doctor who is helping me the most, uh, with my uh, hormonal stuff, um, incidentally, I'm right now, so I'm 50, I'm in the middle of menopause, but I wouldn't even know it um, because of focusing on balancing my hormones, which is just an amazing thing. Um, hormonal balance is so important, but there's, there's a slew of other things that are kind of like in the midst of all of that, you know, or, or maybe, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? Um, nearby roads, if you will, that, you know, things like cortisol and adrenal issues and adrenal fatigue, these are all things that I've experienced that can also wreak havoc on, on your hormones, but it has to do more with lifestyle. Um, so I'm gonna get to that, but, you know, again, just know that this video is for all of you that have been watching that first video because you've been searching on YouTube for answers. I'm gonna give you some updates, and then I will also be working with my doctor Dr. Lane Sebring, who is based in Austin, Texas. You can, if you're from out of town, he is. He does take patients from out of town. Um, I can't recommend someone strongly enough for uh, hormonal balance issues, uh, particularly if you're a woman. He also deals with uh, male patients as well. Um, but he and I will be doing a podcast series and a video series coming up. So make sure that when you watch this video, any questions you have whatsoever about anything that I bring up, or maybe even things that I don't bring up, put in the comments below. Uh, make sure that you are subscribed to my podcast, formerly called Fitfluential Radio. Now it's called The Kelly O Show. Um, make sure you look that up on iTunes and subscribe because I'm gonna have a ton of experts, um, some amazing best-selling authors, people that I really respect. They can talk a lot about a lot of these issues. So let's get started. To bring you up to date with where I've been, when I started um, bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment, this was, I'm trying to think, I was still living in Chicago. So for those of you that haven't watched me in a while, I have since moved to Austin, Texas, and now I live in San Antonio. Um, and I've been down here for about three years. So it could be that I did that video four or five years ago. I, I, again, I have to look it up. I started off seeing a practitioner out in Phoenix, Arizona, <clears throat> and I can recommend him as well. Dr. Uh, Marvin Riska is how you say his last name, but it's spelled R-I-S-K-E. I will link up to him below in the comments as well. Um, I was recommended to him because it was actually Whitney Jones, my trainer and my dear friend, um, who had said, you've got to get, you know, she was trying to help me with weight loss. I was hitting you know, a fat loss plateau. I just couldn't get anywhere with my body and I felt like I was gaining rather than losing no matter how hard I worked in the gym and on my, on my diet. And that's when most women start to realize something's up with their body. Um, for me, I think it was about age 41, maybe 42 when I started noticing things and Whitney was the one that pushed me to get my blood work done because she's like, you've been on all these antibiotics, you've been on spironolactone for all these years, you've been on birth control for 25 years. These, all those, just those three things alone are enough to send your hormones into a state of oblivion, trust me. Um, and so many women have no idea how bad birth control is for you. They have no idea how bad over-the-counter uh, prescription drugs can be and how bad, um, what did I say? Um, oh, and then I was also on, you know, one of the things, 
one of the side effects that I noticed or symptoms um, when I started experiencing hormonal imbalance, two things. It was my skin broke out in these bumps all over my neck and then they spread to my chest um, and my, my upper back and my arms. And um, I also suddenly was sweating. Um, I'd always used secret deodorant and never had a problem with, you know, sweating or body odor. And suddenly I was just, I, I was wet under my armpits and my deodorant didn't work and it was awful because I was, it was very sudden. Those were the two things I noticed. And then of course it was, um, I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep for um, four or five years without taking Excedrin PM. I took Excedrin PM every single night for probably the better part of four or five years. Could not fall asleep. Um, so those were the things that I started to notice. And, and when I mentioned that I was on spironolactone, spironolactone is something that is, some people call it a wonder drug. What I'm gonna tell you is you need to do some Googling, not only on birth control, but on spironolactone. If you have a doctor who is prescribing spironolactone for any kind of skin condition. I had a doctor that prescribed that for me because she said, oh, this is gonna help your adult onset hormonal acne. Well, she put me on that and told me that I would be on it for the rest of my life. And inevitably it didn't work. So they increased my dosage and they increased my dosage. And I was on the maximum dosage of that for seven years. Um, it's a horrible drug. I have now naturally weaned myself off of it. I occasionally will get bumps, but you know what? I still got bumps when I was on it. So it doesn't solve your problems and it is wreaking, if you're on it, it is wreaking havoc with your hormones. In fact, if you wanna know how much it is affecting your hormones, know that this is something that is prescribed for men who are in a transition mode to becoming a woman. Um, if I'm, I hope I'm saying that correctly. It might be women that are transitioning to being a man or vice versa, but that's how much that drug will mess with your hormones, female versus male, okay? Um, so that's, those were some of the, the things that I was on. Um, and then you add to that years and years of yo-yo dieting, extreme dieting, um, eating crappy supplements and ingredients and lots of diet soda. The, all those things collectively combined to make me a walking time bomb of hormonal imbalance. Um, so when I started to get my first blood work done, and then I went to see Dr. Riska out in Arizona, um, I'm trying to think of what my weight was. I think I was like 165, something like that, and I'm 5'5". Five five. Maybe I was closer to 170, I'm not quite sure. Um, I just couldn't lose weight, and so I started on, at that time, <clears throat> he put me on Ipamorelin Samorelin. Now that was prescribed more so for an overall anti-aging, um, tightening of the skin, and if you do some Googling and research on Ipamorelin, Samorlin, um, you'll see that's less about fixing your hormones than overall like an anti-aging wellness longevity type of a thing. Um, it's also very expensive, and that was probably the biggest part of what I was spending money on. Um, he did put me on Nature Throid. Um, he put me on, I was taking testosterone as a shot in my arm, and then I was taking progesterone, um, as a pill, I'm, I'm trying to remember what I was taking back then. I probably have to look back at my video. Um, so I, I started off there that the immediate effects of doing that was my sleep was the first thing that improved. Um, I was able to sleep within two days, literally. I was able to get off of the Excedrin PM every night. Um, so that was part one. Um, the weight loss was certainly never an overwhelming like, oh wow, I'm able to lose weight again. Um, by no means has that even happened to this day. Um, I'm, I think that, and my current doctor has even said, he's like, your thyroid is so mess, my Hashimoto's is so um, extreme that it, it, it <clears throat> sometimes your, your thyroid situation can never really be solved. You have to understand that. So sometimes you just have to find a way to work with what your body's challenges are. Now I'm gonna do a whole separate video on, on thyroid issues because I firmly believe that um, women can get into a state of, you know, you know that you have hypothyroidism, you know that you have Hashimoto's, and you think that there's some perfect be all end all solution to solving it, 
And I've been there, done that. I've done all the research. I've read all these books. I've, I was taking so many supplements and so many pills and, and it didn't make any difference. So I don't, I'm not saying that to be completely negative for all of you people at all. Sorry, I thought it stopped recording. Um, but I do have strong feelings about thyroid in that I think that there's all with the best intentions, a lot of resources out there to tell you what to do about thyroid and oh, take this, like for example, right now I'm on low dose naltrexone. And I read an article about that from uh, Dr. Weston Childs. And again, I'm not saying this to say these things are wrong. They can work for some people, but pretty much everything that I've read or done research on that I thought was gonna be a panacea for my thyroid did absolutely nothing. Um, I personally don't feel that taking Nature Throid does anything for me. Um, I don't feel that the low dose naltrexone has done anything for me. It's supposed to be a miracle drug for some people. I don't think it's done anything for me. I personally think that um, my, because I'm because I'm I'm still certainly not where I want to be um, with my goal weight. I've had some ups and downs over the years. I'll get into those with some other videos. Uh, but I am making progress this year and feeling really confident about that. However, I no longer look at I'm going to make my fat loss goal or my weight loss goal based on solving my thyroid problem. I look at it more as decreasing stress, increasing my nutrition, and just focusing on trusting my gut. Because ultimately, each one of us knows our own body. And sometimes we can get so caught up in following the rules that we see floating around social media, whether it's celery juice, or you know, you've know, you gotta have, you gotta be doing intermittent fasting or not intermittent fasting. And then we chase something because everybody else is doing it and we think, oh, that solved their thyroid problems, so that's what I've gotta do. I think personally what I found is I have to go back to what I know has worked for me and just trust my gut because it's the stressing out about trying to find the perfect solution that will cause more hormonal disruption, jack up your cortisol, give you adrenal issues, and then everything's messed up anyway. That's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned over the past several years is the stressing, the obsessing, the spending time researching and trying to find the perfect solution. That's a rabbit hole. You can, and, and to some degree, we all have to just kind of take a step back and go, you know, what did people do years and years ago? They just, it, things were simpler. I think we can overcomplicate things and, and search and search and search and research. And you can be on Instagram and find some new expert every day who's gonna tell you something else. And if you do what I have done in the past and what I see so many other women doing, you will chase a new solution every week and what happens is you're never sticking to anything and your body has no idea what's going on and you never can settle in to a point where your body goes, okay, things are good, things are stable. You, you have to get to that point with your body and your mind where they know like, we can chill, like this is cool, I know what's going on now. I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes things are common sense, okay? So let me keep going so that you guys, I hope I'm answering so many of the questions that I've gotten from you in, in the comments from this last video. Um, that's what I started off with. Now, when I moved um, to Austin, that's when I was referred to Dr. Lane Sebring. Again, I will link to his website. Um, he is going to start podcasting and blogging because he is a tremendous expert. You wanna go to his website, whatwecouldbe.com <clears throat> and, and stay tuned for that and make sure you subscribe. Um, and again, if you can come to Austin, even if you, I don't care where you live in the United States, if you can make an appointment with him and come see him in Austin, it is so worth the money. Um, I now live in San Antonio. I will drive an hour and a half, almost two hours to go see him because he's, he's that worth it. And he'll spend a half an hour to an hour with you versus, because he's not taking your insurance, right? Insurance doesn't cover the kind of integrative medicine he practices. Now, when I went to see Dr. Sebring, um, I showed him all of my historical data and everything that I was taking with Dr. Riska. And with respect, you know, he was kind of like, I think we need to start from scratch. I wasn't really 
getting anywhere. Um, the Ipamoral and Samoralin was something we cut that was not doing anything for my hormones. Um, my thyroid just kept getting worse. Uh, my testosterone was very, very low again. Uh, my progesterone was relatively okay. Um, my estrogen was high. So, you know, when he, when I first went to see him, he was, and I was, I was a mess. Um, <clears throat> I had been following the advice of somebody in Austin who at first glance seemed to know what he was doing, seemed to be very well studied and articulate, but he was giving me advice and I was blindly following it because he sounded like he knew what he was talking about. But that's another thing I've learned. Don't follow the advice of every person that pops into your life who thinks they can give you a magic solution. Pick one person to follow. In my case, I had to simplify and go, I'm only gonna follow my doctor. I'm not gonna follow my doctor and then listen to this trainer on Instagram who tells me something and then this trainer at the gym and then this dietitian and then this person who's my friend and then this person over here. I was taking input from like six different people and mixing it all up and then taking it more to the extreme, all in the goal of trying to hurry up my weight loss. And ultimately what I did is I ended up driving myself into not only adrenal fatigue, but adrenal burnout, okay? That's no bueno. I'm realizing I'm at 16 minutes, so I've gotta keep this under 20 minutes. <laughs> I really do. Good thing YouTube likes longer videos now. Um, so what, I, what I've been doing with Sebring now is I no longer take testosterone shots. Right now I'm using bioidentical hormonal, it's a combo compounded cream, so my um, DHEA, my progesterone, my estrogen, and my testosterone are all combined into a compounded cream that I put on in the morning on both of my forearms. I am going to be changing to pellets. I've been told pellets are hugely better than the creams, so I plan on doing that. Um, I'm still on Nature Throid. I've shared my feelings on that. I I, even Dr. Sebring has said, I don't think we can ever solve your, your thyroid. My thyroid, it's improved, but my metabolism is not, you know, like on fire. It's weight loss for me is very, very slow. Um, and again, my experience the past several years has told me when my stress level is down and my cortisol is reasonably handled and I'm getting good sleep and I'm pouring nutrition into my body, keeping the carbs, the bad carbs at a minimum, and just living my life right and not stressing and obsessing and trying to push it an extreme diet, extreme fasting, extreme intermittent fasting, extreme overtraining. When I'm reasonable, that's when my body relaxes into it and that's what I'm focusing on. I'm also focusing on trusting my gut more instead of listening to every single person who comes my way with advice. And I'm only listening to my doctor. Um, so again, I'm on Nature Throid. I mentioned low dose naltrexone. That didn't make any difference at all. Um, and so I'm actually set to go see Dr. Sebring and get my next level, my next blood work. I'm trying to stay with getting blood work at a minimum of twice a year, if not four times a year. Ideally, you should be getting blood work four times a year. Um, and having you know a good integrative doctor analyze that and then adjust what you're doing. I've been bad this year, I've only been twice, so I'm getting ready to go back to see Sebring for my third one, and I will take, if he'll let me, I'll take my camera with me and we'll film that, and you can hear exactly what he says and what my, my, what my results are and what we're gonna do, because I do believe we're gonna change me to being on pellets. Um, and in a separate video, I will update you on <clears throat> what i what my experience has been with um decreasing my cortisol a couple years when i first started with sebring my cortisol was and my cortisol has been an issue you guys when when my cortisol blood work comes in basically dr sebring said your cortisol level in the afternoon is so low i don't know how you're staying awake and that's from stress i'm going to do a whole other um I'm gonna do a whole other video on cortisol. Please be sure you go back and listen to the old podcast episodes on what is now called The Kelly O Show. I have a lot of interviews with Sebring on cortisol, on hormones, on adrenal fatigue. 
I'll also do a separate video and some videos and podcasts with Sebring, updated ones on adrenal fatigue. Um, and everything that I've learned about weight loss and diet and eating and intermittent fasting and all of those things together. But for now, hopefully this gives you an update on where I'm at. I think I can say without question, the fact that I am 50 years old in the middle of menopause and feeling great, improving my health, and really like, I don't even feel that there's a difference. Like he had to tell me, he's like, by the way, you know, your blood work from three months ago, it, he's like, women sometimes react funny to this, but you are in menopause. And I'm like, oh, really? Am I walking around sweating all the time with hot flashes and not able to sleep? No, do I have no sex drive? Absolutely not. Um, I don't really notice a difference. I just still am trying to get, um, uh, the body working because I'm dealing with the slow metabolism. The whole thyroid thing is, is a challenge, but I've just come to accept it more than fighting it. And I think that's a big key. So hopefully this, this video brings all of you up to date, gives you some, like a jumping off point and no, please again, um, that I will be doing a whole series, not only on the podcast, but video series. We'll be doing Instagram Lives. We'll be doing um, some events coming up in San Antonio if you want to uh, fly in. We're gonna have some wonderful events for women and we will have hormone experts there. We will have doctors there. Um, it'll all be all about beauty and body and, and all of that. So I think we're gonna have our first one coming up in November. If you're interested, please put, uh, make sure you're subscribed at kellyalexa.com. Um, I'll put the links down below. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast and go back and listen to the old episodes. There's at least a hundred of them up there. You don't have to listen to all a hundred, but a lot of them are on some of these topics. And then let me know in the comments below what questions you have about bioidenticals, pellets, adrenal fatigue, cortisol issues, hormonal imbalance in general, Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism. What are your issues? What are your challenges? What are your frustrations? What can we cover? because I'm here for you and we are going to attack all this together. And in the meantime, you guys have a great weekend. Make sure you remember, subscribe here, share this video with your friends that are looking for, you know, how to solve their hormone issues. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast, The Kelly O Show on iTunes and Stitcher. Make sure you're subscribed at the kellyalexa.com because that's when you'll be able to find out about the event that we're going to do for women that will also have major hormonal experts and doctors from all over the country at it. We'll also be doing that once a quarter and we'll make it available as a digital product afterwards, but that won't be until January. So I got you covered. Let me know what your questions are. Thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you soon.